Hey! You guys like Pokemon? Boy, have I got an exciting thing for you. It's Coromon, a new creature collecting game made by Insert Studio Name Here. That's a weird name for a game studio. Okay, it's not technically new, but it did recently have its full release on PC and even more recently came out for the Nintendo Switch. For the low, low price of $20 on the eShop, I think this is a steal considering how much content is in the game. And I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just played the demo a while back and found it super fun with all the charm of pocket monsters and a nostalgic pixel art style that older fans like myself will surely fall in love with. The game features over a hundred amazing creatures to catch with a variety of creative designs, like this worm that got his head stuck in a nut, or the bear from those Coca-Cola commercials. Am I the only one old enough to remember those? Just like Pokemon, we've got a variety of types with different effectivenesses and resistances to each other. Going down the line, we've got Normal, Electric, Ghost, Sand, which seems slightly different to the ground type I'm used to seeing. Fire, Ice, Water, Magic type. There's also Foul type, Heavy, Air, Poison, and Cut. With those last six I mentioned being skills only, which I'm guessing means that you can't find Koromon of that type, but they can learn moves of them. Stats are pretty much the same as Pokemon with physical and special attack and defense, speed and HP, but the biggest difference comes when you level up. Not only do you have the traditional experience that gives you levels and can eventually lead to your Koromon evolving, but there is a second bar underneath your experience that when filled up awakens your Koromon's potential and lets you put stat points into whatever stat you choose. Sometimes that potential can even lead to a different color. So there's basically shiny Koromon too, if that's your cup of tea. Now I think that pretty much covers all the basics of Koromon, so without further ado, let's get into our adventure. Oh, and don't forget to leave a like. A Charmander back there ain't gonna feed itself. We begin the game in bed, as many Pokemon games begin. I love pixel art, dude. Like, there's just something about this style of games that it's just my favorite, specifically the GBA era with games like Minish Cap and Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. When I think about nostalgia, that's the style of games that first comes to mind. And we get a little hat. Oh my gosh, we can be a frog. Oh, that's just too cute. I like the panda too. Yeah, looking cool as ever. Look at me, little gamer guy. Is that the freaking companion cube from Portal? Always got to check. Do we got a potion in the PC? Oh, we've got... Flappy Swirmy. Hey, you guys remember Flappy Bird? <laughs> Here's the better version of it. Flappy Swirmy, because everybody knows Swirmy, right? My favorite Pokemon, Swirmy. How could you forget Swirmy, dude? Oh, I suck. You must be so excited. You're finally going to become a Luxolus Battle Researcher. Celebrate your new job. I made a reservation at your favorite Black <gasps> McDonald's. I love chicken nuggies. Come on. After a heartfelt goodbye from our mom, we set off on the bullet train to the big city where we begin our new job as a battle researcher for Luxolus. This totally reminds me of the train in Pokemon Gold and Silver. I forget the name exactly, but it would take you between Kanto and Johto region. Now this totally caught me by surprise. Koromon actually lets you choose your difficulty, something that Pokemon fans have been dying for over the last couple of generations. In Koromon, we can choose the normal difficulty, which is the recommended regular experience of the game. You can go down to easy mode, where your Koromon will fully restore their HP as they level up, so you don't have to backtrack to the Pokemon Center, or whatever the equivalent is in this game. You've got your normal difficulty, or you can go with hard mode. For those trainers that want an extra challenge, when one of your Koromon faints, it'll leave your squad, essentially turning it into a Nuzlocke. And if you're on the sadistic side, maybe like a little BDSM, then insane mode is for you. You've got the same rules as hard mode, so Nuzlocke essentially, but you also can't escape from battles and can only catch one Koromon in each area. If it faints, you're out of luck. You can even choose to turn on or off specific settings from the ones I just mentioned, which totally caught me by surprise just how many settings there are available. There's even a randomizer for the game, which I guess you unlock after beating it. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to go with the standard difficulty, but maybe in the future, I'd be down to try out a Nuzlocke. 
and after messing with the settings and receiving our handy dandy dual disc, or whatever this is actually called, we set off to the Koromon lab to get our starter. So I started wandering around the city trying to find where we get our starter only to realize that it was actually back in the first building. There's a basement. I know people complain about Pokemon holding your hand too much recently, but now I'm kind of thinking maybe I need that. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Nelson, head of the Coromon Lab. Let's connect you to a Coromon. We'll run a series of tests to find the one which is most suited to your personality. I can't wait. Question 1. You encounter a wild Coromon. What is your first reaction? See what it does, attack right away, or try to capture it. I guess that depends if I have a quick ball or not but I suppose I'll see what it does. I see, I would do that too. Question two, what's your motivation for becoming a researcher? I wanna earn a good living. <laughs> yeah, man, these bills ain't gonna pay themselves. And the final question, describe your ideal first date, bruh. What does this have to do with the research? I think this professor is just trying to go out with us or something. Let's go with skydiving. I'm sure he's not gonna wanna, but never mind. Okay, all done. Do we get our starter now? Please. I wonder if this actually affects the options we get. First, we've got a fire guy, Toruga. This Koromon's very strong, loves to battle and learn powerful moves. Second up is, oh, I don't know what that is, but it looks cute. Nibblegar, a water type. This Koromon has high endurance in battles and is able to outlast most others. And last but not least, the Coca-Cola bear, Cub Zero. This Koromon is a jack of all trades, perfect balance between offense and defense. And now, the results of your analysis. The algorithm points to one clear winner. The Fire Koromon would be a good match for you. So even though the test recommends a Koromon for you, doesn't mean you have to go with that one, of course. You can still take your pick of the litter. Now, I mentioned before that I played the demo of this game a long time ago, and back then I went with Cub Zero, the jack of all trades. Let's just go ahead and check the summary first, get a better look at this guy. <laughs> He's literally just a little bear trapped in a snowball. Very, very cute, but I'm not gonna go with the same one I played with already. Oh, I love his cry. With the high endurance, Nibblegar will get through most dire situations. And his sprite, that's so sick, dude. Oh, I'm really tempted to go with this guy, even though the algorithm recommended the fire mod. So let's at least see it in action. It's a little fire turtle. But no, dude, Nibblegar just looks way too cool. I gotta go with him. Even though apparently he's the more defensive one, these sound effects are sick. We've now got Nibblegar, and it seems to have the super sensory trait. Very useful indeed, but you won't get up far out there with just one. Take this powder bit for extra protection. What the heck? We got a second starter just for nothing? Jeez, that was intense. I thought they just blew up. You know, I never thought about it, but in the Pokemon world, the Pokeballs dematerialize the creatures into light and store them. They should definitely have more crazy technology like teleporters. Here we are. Are you prepared for your first battle? Oh, we got to battle the professor himself? Don't worry, it'll be a fair fight. I brought my Cub Zero, which has the same level as your Nibblegar. But I'm pretty sure ice is super effective against water, which should really be a thing in the official Pokemon games too. Yeah! You know you got a good creature collecting game or RPG in general when the battle music is a bop. And the sprites! Oh, the animation, dude! I'm actually getting more Pokemon black and white vibes now with the way that the Pokemon were animated in that one. But Nibblegar here's got Chomp and Mighty Roar. I'm guessing this is like a stat raising move and then Chomp is just our standard attack. So go! Chomp him down, buddy! He's going for the scratch. Really nice animations there. I mean, I kind of wish that they would like run up and hit each other. That'd be like the next step up, but it's still really nice. Let's try out our mighty roar. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about those emojis popping up over everybody's heads. One of the biggest differences in Koromon can be seen in the battles, where instead of moves having PP, Koromon instead have stamina points, which is similar to MP or mana in other traditional RPGs, and your moves can consume this SP until you run out, and then you can't attack, forcing you to rest in order to gain back some stamina. And one more chomp should seal the deal. Nice! Hey, we got a critical hit! That's a slick animation though, when it went back into its spinner there. And we get level 6 and Bubble Burst, 
our first move of our own type. Not sure if same type attack bonus is a thing in this game, but uh, if it is, that bubble move should be very nice. And after kicking the professor's butt, we are officially ready to start our adventure and catch some more Koromon, which she recommends we do at the park. But first, we gotta heal up, cause the professor wasn't courteous enough to do it for us. Here we got the equivalent of Pokemon Centers. Hello, welcome to the trainer hub, yes. Now do we have a little jingle though? Oh, come on. There's gotta be a little jingle, right? I mean, I guess if you're gonna copy Pokemon, you don't wanna make it too obvious, but it felt like something was missing there. On to Radiant Park we go, the first official route in the game. Got a golden box. Wonder what makes that more special than just your regular boxes. Oh, there's multiple items in it. <laughs> that face the character makes, oh my god, that's amazing. I was gonna say earlier, maybe those little emojis pop up because the character can't show too much emotion with the limited graphics, but nope, apparently we can show plenty of expression. We got a wild patter bit, only at level one. That's interesting that it's so weak, I mean. I think this is actually the same one we got from the professor as our second starter, so I'm not gonna catch it. What was with that sound it made when it died? That almost sounded like a human talking. Here's a new Koromon, we got Armado, which looks like the fire turtle that was one of the starters, but I think this might be a normal type instead. It's going for the concentrate, crit chance increased, ooh that's not good. Before we get crit to death, let's uh, try to catch this dude. I'm gonna go for one of my spinners. Go spin! Oh, so that's why they call it a spinner. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Just like the Pokeball, three shakes and you get it. Every Koromon has a trait, which is essentially like abilities in Pokemon with Armado having the trait vaccinated. With a pandemic currently going on, I feel like the game's trying to tell us something. What the heck? We didn't even level up, but apparently Nibblegar unlocked its potential. We actually get to choose what we put our stat points into. Now this is something I don't think Pokemon would ever do, but it's really interesting. But it is something I love to see in RPGs. Going back to Mario and Luigi, that was one of my favorite parts of leveling up in that game is you get to pick what stat you raise. We have a slightly higher attack than special attack, so maybe I'll go one point in HP, two in physical attack, and off we go. Nice. Now this dude actually wanted me to catch one for him, and yes I did. You can have our motto, I guess. My supervisor will be so impressed. We just did his homework for him. That's not a good example. Jerome, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, Jerome. Oh, we actually get our motto back. And here, take these for your effort too. Wow. Nearby, we've got an R&D lab. And inside, we meet Larry, whose colleagues have been working on some upgrades for our dual disc. There's a super sick push function that sprouts a magic arm and a pyrotechnic upgrade that really makes you feel like Iron Man. But it turns out Larry's not even our actual boss because rolling out the back comes Professor X or whatever his actual name is, I don't really care. And he goes ahead and explains the plot of this game because unlike a certain other game, we don't have gyms or a league to challenge here. Instead, we're going after something called Titan Essence, which we can acquire from legendary creatures known as the Titans. And as a member of the Titan Task Force, our goal is to take down the Titans like Hercules in that one movie. I don't know how many Titans there are in total, but I'm gonna guess one of each major type, which I think there are six in this game, with the closest of these Titans being Volkar, the Bender of Storms. And now we're finally free to explore the world. Or not, it's freaking Larry again. And he won't let us go until we try out his stupid stink bomb. All right, let's see what this is all about. <laughs> Did we just kill all the grass around us? That means you're free to wander through this bush without the threat of wild Koromon. And in just five minutes, it's recharged, ready to use again. Useful, huh? So it's a free repel, but you can only use it every five minutes. Well, that's all for today. Okay, bye Larry. Yo, this Koromon looks sick! Of course, no creature collecting game is complete without an early bird. 
And in Koromon, we've got Silquill, which looks super cool, but only at level 1. Might be kind of hard to train this guy. Ooh, another Silquill. Maybe it's higher level? Oh my god, this one's level 5! Okay, sorry, old Silquill, but I'm going for this one instead. This Silquill seems a little feisty, so I'm not sure if the regular spinner is gonna quite work out. Or maybe it does! We got another one! Let's check out the summary and see if it's a little better than the first we got. Still standard potential with a common rarity, but it's at least level 5, so gonna be a lot easier to train this one. Oh my god! <laughs> There's a move called Pocket Sand! That is amazing. Could this be our first Koromon battle? Okay, I guess not. He doesn't even want to look at us. Oh, what? Huh. Maybe we don't cross eyes like certain other games. Greetings! I'm the Ranger of Radiant Park. If you follow north, you'll reach Hayville. Be careful when entering the grass, though. Wild Cormon. <laughs> yeah, not like we knew that already, huh? Now is this the first trainer? What? You also don't want to battle? What's up with that? The world map says I can find Tattle here. Do you have one? Uh, don't think so, but maybe I can lie. Oh, wait, what? Todd, the Tattler, wants to actually battle? I didn't know that's actually what was happening here, but let's try out one of our other Koromon. Actually, the one we got from the Professor. Oh my god, of course you get critical hit. <laughs> I don't even check what type this thing is. Healers. It takes 5 SP to use. It must be good, right? As long as you can take another chump. Go, Feelers! Oh, that is creepy. I don't like that. We found its weak spot, which I think means we have a guaranteed critical hit on the next turn. As long as we survive, that is, we're gonna slam and jam and oh my gosh, that did a lot of damage. Let's go, batter bit. They both gain XP because they were both in the battle, which confirms there's no XP share, but at least everyone that's in the battle splits the experience. Oh my god, whoa, yo, this guy hits multiple times in a row. No, our first casualty, Silquil, is down. And you've even got Moxie? Or I guess motivated, but it's basically the same. Oh wait, it's even better than Moxie. He raises both attack and special attack. Dude, Mino is OP. It's all up to you, patter bit. Even though I'm actually just going to try to catch this thing. I wonder if it's going to let us add it onto your team without having to go back to the center. A one, a two, a three. And Mino's been caught. Oh, nice. You can replace a squad member. That's really convenient. I'm sorry, level 1 Silquill. <laughs> so it seems locking eyes with people doesn't immediately activate a battle in this game. You gotta instead talk to them. Could you help me complete some milestones? Sure! Let's battle! Oh my gosh, it's so cute! Come on and slam! And almost! We didn't quite one-shot it. What the heck? You got a berry. Vegetarian. What? You got double healing? Oh, that's cheap. Let's see how you feel about a super effective bubble burst! And that's why I picked Mr. Nibbles. Even though I love turtles. And finally, we've made it to Hayville, which is apparently where we were supposed to go, according to the professor. Hey, I'm looking for a Mino. If you can find one, I'll be willing to trade my Buzzy for it. It's not potent, but my Buzzy has great potential. Well, I do have a Mino, but I don't know if I really want to trade. I mean, I am curious what the heck is up with that Buzzy. Sorry, Mino. We could always catch another one, I suppose. But now we've got Buzzy. Please take good care of it. It seems to me like this would be the evolution of Swarmy or Flappy, I guess. Whoa, what is this dude? Moffle. He looks so cute. Kind of reminds me of like Ferret mixed with Excadrill. And I'm guessing it's probably a sand type. Because we know there's no ground in this game, but if it were a Pokemon, it would definitely be ground, so... Come on, Mopple, stay in there! Nice! We haven't failed to catch a single Koromon yet. And indeed, this is going to be a Sand-type, who's still a common rarity. I don't think we've gotten anything actually rare yet. This guy should get an award. He's outstanding in his field. Can we give this game an award for outstanding writing? <laughs> With puns like that, it's feeling like I wrote this crap. Well, 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 this is deep. If whoever wrote these lines is watching this video somehow, I need you to DM me on Twitter. I've got some very 
Nice words for you. The Koromon cries are so sick. It reminds me a lot of the Pokemon anime where they would say their own name, but with like a unique twist for each one. Here in Hayville, there's a teleporter that will link the town to the rest of the Velua region, but apparently the Amazon delivery guy is late. So of course it rests on our shoulders to go find the parts that haven't been delivered yet. I have no idea where to look for him, so might as well go check out what the townspeople are up to. Burn his trap! Curse those Beezle! I'll help you! Oh my god, that's what this thing is called? And here I thought it was actually called Buzzy. I guess I've been bamboozled. Or should I say bambeezled? Eh, you see, I got puns too. Kinda wish there was an indicator for what's super effective, even though that would maybe make the game a little easier. I'm not used to these new types, so I feel that might be helpful, especially for new players, which is pretty much everybody coming over from Pokemon. Like, there's a couple of differences here that aren't obvious, at least to me. I'm just gonna look up a type chart, honestly. <laughs> Apparently, normal types are only weak to poison, which could have definitely helped earlier, but we did it, so whatever. Everybody gains experience, even if one of your Koromon faints. As long as they participated, they still get a little cut of the pie, which is awesome. Thanks for that. I thought I was a goner. I thought I was too, man. That Beezle was not easy to take out. Back in his workshop, Perrin starts working on upgrading our gauntlet, so it's capable of... I'm not really sure, to be honest. I should have probably paid more attention to dialogue, but... While he's whacking away at that, we're gonna go whack away at some books because there's no greater gift in this world than knowledge. I brushed up on my knowledge, so bring it on, Jebediah. Here we go. How many types are there? Ooh, I'm so ready for this. There's 13. Poison is very effective against... Oh, God. I didn't actually read up on this. Uh, I would assume maybe... Water? No, probably normal. Hey, I guessed it. I mean, no, I totally knew that. Damage dealt is always determined by the attack stat. Y yes? No, defense too, right? Exactly. Only physical skills use attack. Oh, okay, trick question. There are types which can only be found on skills. True? I am so freaking smart. Have I done it? I've bested Jebediah! Oh, I'm so smart. Here, take this. A bookworm. And a lazy gem. The frick is that? Earn some XP when the holder did not participate. Oh, there is an EXP share, so that's what the lazy gem does. Alright, well I need to heal up again first. Oh, she wants a favor first. A passing trainer left a lot of swarmy in our care, but they came very aggressive and when they evolved, they just flew right out. You might have seen some of them. They're a menace to the village. They even intrude people's homes. Since you're the only trainer at the moment, could you get rid of all of them? Oh my gosh. Even Nurse Joy has a quest for us in this game. So that's what you were up to. I guess I couldn't battle you until I had a little bit of context, huh? Oh, and my battery's low. That's just great. Seems like our Chomp is actually doing more damage than Bubble. Probably because when our stats awoke. Oh my god, we got poison. Why did we get poison? Why do you attack first now? What the frick, man? I thought I was faster than you. Oh, good job, Nibblegar. Dude, that's so much experience. Let's go. We awaken our potential. I should probably check out my skills and see that indeed this is a special category. We're not going to learn another one until level 10. Oh, it tells you though that it's a status and then special. That's really cool that it actually shows you at least what category of moves you're going to be learning, so that way you have a better idea of what stats to raise with your potential. Looks like Mr. Nibbles is going to be learning a lot of special moves, so I'm going to start bumping some points into that. Well, it turns out that whole Beezle thing was optional after all. All we really had to do was hit up the library, and now our gauntlet has been upgraded! With the push module, which means we can get that log that was blocking our way out of the way. Except Winifred's blocking our way. Come on, Winifred, get on with your day. I got people to go places to meet. Our next stop is Woodlow Forest, and I'm thinking this looks like a trainer. Come to the right place. This forest is filled with challenge. You look strong, so that won't be a problem, right? You can recognize other trainers by their gauntlet. If someone has one, they're probably a trainer that wants to battle. Oh. I didn't actually think about that. 
but I don't think that they actually cross eyes. Oh! There are trainers that you can cross eyes with, or however you say it. Basically, they got the little exclamation mark on their head, just like our favorite creature catching game. And there's even a little jingle for it. This area is filled with bugs, apparently. Not my favorite type in Pokemon, so probably not my favorite here in Coromon either. Oh, it's just Swermy, okay. Ooh, that's a new Mon right there. We got Buzzlet. It looks like it might actually be an electric and bug type. I mean, bug type's not actually a thing in this game, but there's definitely electric type, and it's a bug, so, you know, I am definitely going to catch it. If the spinner works, that is, but then again, our spinner has never failed yet, and it won't fail again this time. We got Buzzlet. Oh, that's so cool. Lunar Pup with the menacing ability. Uh-oh. Sorry, I gotta knock you down, but oh, never mind. It's actually not very effective. So I'm gonna guess this is the first ghost-type Koromon we've encountered, judging by the whole motif here being a skull on a puppy's head. I think there's a ghost dog rumored to be in Scarlet and Violet. Maybe it'll look something like this. I definitely like the concept. I don't like that we're doing no damage, though. Whoa! What is that animation? Finally, we hit one of them, and it's a crit! Even though it wasn't very effective, that was sick. Got another new Koromon coming out, Scarbone. The hardest thing in this game is definitely trying to guess what type anything is. Like, the design tells me this might be a sand type, but we're doing no damage with any of our moves. How much more do we have left in this route? Cause my dudes are not looking too healthy right now. I do have a lot of cakes though. Maybe I should start feeding them some of those. Ooh, a skill flash. That's another TM right there. You know, I just noticed that we flashed a skill onto Nibble earlier, but he didn't actually have it in battle. I wonder if that means we have to, like, swap it out? Oh yeah, you can disable moves. But where is the Poison Chomp? Oh! We actually have to enable it, which is pretty cool if you ask me. You can only have four moves in total, but you can enable and disable them whenever you want and swap them out for moves that you've already learned before without having to go all the way back to a move relearner like in Pokemon. And to my surprise, there's still new Koromon lurking in this forest. We got Ferova, which actually looks like it might be our first ice type we've encountered. I'm pretty sure ice is super effective against water in this game, so we gotta be careful. That puts me to sleep. Great. I don't care if I'm asleep or what, we're going for our spinner and it's hopefully, oh no! Our first Koromon that's actually broken out. Really? Brova. A little bit uh, feisty, aren't we? Okay, well, I've been saving a special spinner just in case for a situation just like this. We got the silver spinner, which I'm guessing is kind of like a great ball. It's probably a golden spinner, too. Pretty sure we've seen those. But we don't even need the gold. The silver is enough. We got Brova. Which is actually the first ice type. Oh, it's a rare one too. Okay. Compared to Pokemon, this route is a lot longer. And we'd have to go through a lot of patches of grass to get all the way back to the center. Oh, we got another new encounter, Slitherpin. I guess technically we saw it earlier in the daycare, but we haven't actually seen it in battle yet. So I'm very excited to try to catch it. Pretty sure it's going to be a poison type. Oh wait, is poison even a thing? I think poison is only a type for attacks, not for the actual Koromon. So I wonder what this snake is. Let's find out, because we got it! And yes, it is a normal type, but it does have some poison moves. So poison is a type for moves, but not actually for Koromon, which is a very interesting distinction from Pokemon. I don't think they would necessarily ever have types just for moves, but that might be interesting, like as a new gimmick of some sort. Ah, do we have our first puzzle here, perhaps? I think I might have already messed it up, honestly. <laughs> Wait, I just realized we can still complete it. We first push this one, and then from down here, we push it up. We should be able to get all the way around and push this log. Quite tough for being the first puzzle in the game. The reward better be worth it. Two silver spinners, which are basically like great balls. So I'd say that was worth it. Oh my God, wait, there's more? Okay, this was definitely worth it then. And if you notice in the top right corner, I've actually got a repel warning, which means that uh, we 
still run into Koromon? What the heck? There's double battles? Or two on one? Okay, that's just not fair. Maybe there's just a chance that you repel them, but it's not guaranteed. That's definitely weird. But uh, all of this is going to lead us to a house in the woods. Hello? Jack, nice to meet ya. You don't know Jack. Oh my god, this guy's a traitor! No! Why? <laughs> oh no! I don't even have Mr. Nibble anymore! Oh, we are so done for. Ah, and the poison is super effective! And he's faster than us. So, if another poison hits, we're probably done. Oh wait, Fast Strike is priority, I forgot. Oh my god, we get the crit actually, hell yeah. That's what I like to see, Silquill. And I jinxed it, of course. Oh my gosh. Well, we're still alive, so we can at least maybe finish the Slither Pin. Oh, we might have gotten super lucky. I'm pretty sure that, oh my god, we don't even have an ice move. I know that it's weak to ice, but we literally don't even have ice. I mean, might as well try to put it to sleep so that whoever's next up can handle it. Oh, of course we miss. We're totally gonna lose our first battle. Feels kind of early in the game to be using a revive, but I don't want to find out what happens if we lose all of our Koromon. It could be that we just black out and respawn back at the Pokemon Center, but it might also be a game over, and I haven't saved in like two hours, so yeah, I don't want to risk it. And we barely don't finish it, and of course you've got a berry. Too bad I don't have anything more powerful than- Hey, it doesn't even matter! Silquill finally takes it out! And you know what? After that whole ordeal, man, I think I'm good on Koromon for now. I kind of wanted to keep going until at least one of our Koromon evolved, but this game's stressing me out, man. <laughs> Definitely more of a challenge than your usual Pokemon. There is a lot to love here, from the character designs to the multitude of settings that you get in the game right from the beginning. There's like so many options for difficulty, customizing your character. And when you level up, you get to actually pick what stats to raise, which is probably my favorite part of this game compared to Pokemon. For now though, that's gonna do it, so leave a like if you enjoyed, and let me know what you think of Koromon. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you wish you could be as cute as the Coca-Cola bear? I don't have to wish it. I can just do it.